Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today, we're moving one tier up on the German battlecruiser line, because today we'll be looking at the Prinz Ruprecht at tier 9. And yes, somebody mentioned that in the comments that I should need that I need to make another video about uh, how to pronounce German ship names because there's a bunch of new ones. So I'll have to do an update on that in a while. But for now, let's look at this thing. Now, uh, to nobody's great surprise, the Prinz Ruprecht did not exist because, well, all of these are designs that were made late in the First World War towards the end and after the First World War nobody was building the battle cruisers in Germany because they had other problems. This was, according to the Wargaming Wiki, the uh, 4541 design, so uh, the same displacement as the Zeton at Tier 8 with 45,000 tons, uh, but with four turrets instead of with the rather obscure triple turret layout uh, that the, that the or, or three turret layout that the Zeton had at Tier 8. Um, one thing that is kind of curious, and that's also pointed out in the wiki, is that the guns are only 406mm in caliber, whereas the design was actually pointing out to 419mm. So I did have a quick look into that, and it turns out these are actually the same guns. The thing is, the, uh, the, uh, the guns, the 406mm guns as designed for the H-Class battleships, were thick enough that they were considering to bore them out to 420 millimeters. So the 420s are actually just bored out 406s. And that's how this comes to be. So it's not completely wrong. <laughs> she does, however, I believe, have fewer secondary guns than the, uh, than the design was calling for. But let's go and compare the ship to, uh, to the Zeton and see how that has, has changed. And what has changed? Uh, we, we get an additional, we get an additional secondary overload. We get a better sonar, but other than that, it's pretty much this, uh, more of the same. The hit point pool for a tier nine battleship is still on the low side. I still maintain that these probably would be better classified as large cruisers rather than battleships, because the armor plating, even though it looks slightly better on paper, is really struggling to hold up. You are taking a lot of damage from a lot of things. So you cannot really um, you, you cannot really come under fire all that much in these ships. She is a tick faster, and maneuverability is more or less comparable. Like I said, we do get an additional guns. These are exactly the same guns and as they are in the Titan. The difference being that even though we now have a, a more sane layout, uh, we we paid for it with four and a half seconds off the base reload, which is a little bit of an issue, especially that the range is not particularly much longer either. So 22 seconds base reload on on the main guns is on the slow side. Uh, a lot of the German ships have much faster base reload due to the fact that they only have eight guns. But they, and again, these ships are not about the main guns. These ships are about the secondaries. And the secondaries are, for all intents and purposes, identical. The only difference being that we only get six twins. Uh, compared to, which is the same layout that we get on, on, on the Zeton, but is, I think, fewer than the actual historical design was calling for. They have a better range, and, the, and, and so do the auto-secondaries, otherwise that's all identical. Torpedoes. Exact same torpedoes as on the Zeton, only we get two additional launchers, but once again have paid for it with a 15-second reload time. Which means we're now at a 90-second reload, but in return we have lots of torpedoes. So... Uh, the theme sort of continues of that these are um, these are ships these are ambushers these are ships that are there to to strike uh, fast and hard at something at mid to close range and then stop striking for a bit while they're recovering everything uh, including their hit points. The AA has been slightly buffed but it's still not great and the concealment is a little bit worse. I would still argue that uh, at this point I've played around with a bunch of different builds and I would actually argue that the concealment build is probably a decent choice because uh, you're in tier 9 and you're going to go up against tier 10 ships and in a tier 10 battle, um, even just while you're trying to get into position, 
you will be you will be hit and you will be hit hard and you don't have an awful lot of hit points you don't have the armor to sustain any kind of concentrated fire right so let's uh, before we look at this setup let's compare to the friedrich der große the uh, tier 9 tech tree uh, uh, the, the tier 9 other tech tree battleships they're both tech trees uh, obviously, one significant difference is in the survivability between these two ships. The Freddy has significantly more hit points and significantly better armor than the Prinz Ruprecht. And like I said here, the Freddy actually gets the 420mm guns. But these things have a 19.5 second base reload, not a 22 second like on the Prinz Ruprecht. And obviously being the board out 420s, they do more damage. Uh, in terms of secondaries, the gimmick here on the Prince Ruprecht is the uh, is the uh, the or one of the gimmicks on the secondaries is that they can fire high explosive, which is nice, and they have a better base range than the Freddy, which is also nice. Uh, and the uh, the 105 mm dual purpose auto secondaries also have a longer range, and obviously the fact that you have torpedoes. So all in all, it is reasonably balanced um, in terms of I would say balancing more towards a uh, all guns blazing torpedo damage output thing, but uh, paying for it in terms of survivability. The big question here is: is can you can you make this can you make this work in a tier ten game? So that's what we're going to be exploring going forward. But first, uh, there is one elite bonus and on one only, and that's the secondary gun specialization. Uh, there are no other elite bonuses, so let's we don't even need to look at that, which reduces our reload by 10%. And the build also, in at least in the first slot, is pretty straightforward. You want the secondary battery mod 2 for additional um, range on both the auto secondaries and the manual secondaries. You could kind of argue for another 15% reload on the manual secondaries, given their great range. But uh, personally, I would just go for uh, I would just go for range and dispersion because the dispersion can be a little bit meh, at, especially at the ranges that you're starting to reach with these things. Uh, slot two, uh, I've used propulsion because you do need to get yourself uh, you do need you, you do need to to get into cover and out of cover relatively quickly if you have to, and like I mentioned, concealment in three. I have played around with a bunch of builds. I've played around with a with the traditional build with steering in three. I've I've played around with double steering, but uh, so far concealment sort of uh, is the most successful that I've had in this. Uh, the commander I've just uh, brought him along, so uh, still the same setup. You eventually want to have the armor piercing cap shell, one of the core uh, core core things that you want, the core skills that you want, is the close quarters combat expert, obviously. And uh, uh, something like extinguisher is also wor quite worth having. Uh, I am not using the recon skill, because while they have sonar, uh, the generalist skill, I think, is in these tiers is, is, is the better choice at this point. And yeah, everything else is just on sort of survivability, uh, survivability build. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, Prinz Ruprecht. Prinz Ruprecht was the, uh, I believe, crown prince of Bavaria during that time. So that's where that name comes from. Camouflage. <laughs> if for whatever reason you enjoy playing at tier 9 and you want to have the historical camo, it gives you hit points, which is sorely needed. Main battery range, same thing. Secondary battery, battery range, great. And torpedo range, also great. So uh, all, in go all in all, a very good... Um, a very good set of of camouflage if you want it, but uh, not many people are going to spend gold on a tier nine ship in that much making. So we're gonna go with uh, the we're gonna go with the uh, the free camo. So um, all right, here's how we're gonna do this. I've got two battles for you today, and the first battle is a tier ten game where I'm bottom tier. And the second battle is a tier 9 game where I'm top tier. And the reason I'm showing you these two battles, please don't switch off after the first battle, because, spoiler alert, it's not going to go well. But I'll show you, I'm showing you that for a reason. So uh, let's go into that. The first battle, we're playing, like I said, tier 10. And, uh, hourglass in base, base capture, and we're up against Haku, Iowa, Minnesota, Maino, Baltimore, Shima, and Kitakaze. Now, it's not a flat out tier 10. There's no Yamato, right? Just just, just saying that. So what, uh, what are we going to do? 
Well, like I said, uh, it's not a battleship as much as it is a more a really a battle cruiser, more on the cruiser side of things. The potential damage output of this thing is pretty great. The problem comes with getting a situation where you can use it. So on hourglass, what am I going to do? I'm going to I'm going to hang right. I'm going to try and uh, because I've got a Brindisi with me and Brindisi's got semi armor piercing, so we may be able to do something against uh, this uh, against destroyers coming in. But uh, I'm going to try and hang right. Uh, get behind the island, wait and see where the carrier is going and see if there is uh, if there is well, well we'll have to see where the enemy team is and find our position and see what we can do and see if we can find an opening. So from here we should be able to cover the the inside uh, in the inside of the map as well as whatever comes around the flank here and we obviously need to control this flank because that is important. So let's see what comes down this side. But um, one of the problems, and that Brindisi is going a danger, is doing a very dangerous turn here. I would have gone behind the island because if he gets spotted, if he gets air spotted, then um, he'll get slammed. And okay, so we've got Baltimore coming here, and we've got they've got battleship support on the other side. Okay, uh, and there's Shima coming as well. So full on reverse because there's the Shima coming. Let's get the uh, secondaries lined up on the Shima, secondary overload up, and start opening up at that thing. And see if we can do some damage on the Shima, obviously the Shima being the big threat. But uh, the secondaries taking their time to get there, and if they hit, they hit hard, but uh, they do need to hit. So uh, I am in reverse, just uh, having the sonar up, waiting and see if the Shima is doing anything. The auto secondaries, I mean this is a Shima that is sailing more or less in a straight line. The auto secondaries are not doing an awful lot. And uh, Shima now smokes up, but uh, yeah, I'm too far away to be able to do anything about it. And I am taking flanking fire from that Iowa over there. And there's not an awful lot I can do about it because the Shima is keeping me spotted. So Brindisi has disengaged and uh, Shima is obviously now going unspotted. So unless the carrier is doing something, there's not an awful lot we can do here on this flank. Now, Iowa is behind the, is behind the mountain there. Shima keeps me spotted and um, even, even after I've stopped shooting and my concealment goes down, and we've got Baltimore coming, obviously, bow in. And uh, just keep in, just remember that Baltimore and that Iowa are both tier 9 ships. It's the same tier ships. So Baltimore is in is in secondary range. And um, with with these uh, torpe extremely slow torpedoes, I'm not even going to try. But yeah, Baltimore sets me on fire, obviously. Now I've got double fire going, so I'm going to damage on that. But... Um, while poking out, trying to get into a range where I'm effective against the Baltimore, I am obviously now giving broadside to the Iowa, which is not great, because there's a Shima out there, there's a Baltimore out there, I've got an Iowa on my left flank, so we're going to have to back off again behind the island, because I can't push because there's a Shima out there, and there's an Iowa which can punish me from the left, if he, so decide, if he decides so to do so, which means I'm reduced to uh, a long-range a long range gun battle with that Baltimore. Now, Brindisi is... Um, trying to make something happen. There come the Shima torpedoes, but uh, we, we can't really. And yeah, I'm, I'm still getting shot at by the Iowa, obviously, because he's in a good angle. He's in a good angling position on that side. And uh, I am running relatively low on hit points. So I've got, a, I've got another heal coming off. And now uh, there's another destroyer come, uh, attacking us on this flank. So I do need to move forward because there's a Kitakaze. And I'm still being hammered, absolutely hammered by that Iowa. Plus there are probably going to be Shima torps in the water. So, but I can't stay here. I have to move, which means I'm going to die to Shima Torps or to the Iowa or uh, maybe to the get burned down by the Kitakaze. Okay, uh, I, I still I can just make this happen or Baltimore is killing me. But there's really just nothing you can do in this sort of scenario to be able to become effective. Uh, I've been fighting for four minutes and I've gotten 20, 26,000 points of damage. Uh, if, if you don't have an opening if you don't have a, a situation where you can do something, where you can move in close and, uh, and make things happen, uh, these ships are atrociously ineffective. Because you, you are completely reliant on uh, being able to fight at 8 kilometer range. Ideally less than that, because you, you want your secondaries to be on target. And uh, if, you, if there's a destroyer out there, now, if, if I wasn't a Freddy, I couldn't have done this either. But if I was in a Freddy, I would have had 420 millimeter guns with a faster reload and the armor to literally just tank this flank and just keep these guys busy. 
That's not something you can do in the Prince Ruprecht because you just don't have the health or the armor to do this. You are reliant on uh, be, being able to play in a position where you can be effective. And uh, I, you could argue, what, what, what could I have done differently? You could argue that I should have probably abandoned this flank. The problem is, uh, at that point, Shima loops around and, uh, and takes down the carrier and caps, right? So uh, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to make something happen on, uh, on, in situations where the enemy team doesn't let you do this. And you are at the mercy of long-range battleships. And again, this wasn't a Montana or a Yamato even. You can imagine what that's going to look like if these things are, um, if you get, if you play up against these things. So, uh, but it looks like my team is able to get, has been able to loop around the other flank because we've been fighting a whole bunch of them. And the, the Richthofen has actually taken down that Iowa. Well done, Richthofen. And it looks like my team is able to uh, is going to be able to 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 capture this. So, wh why am I showing you this one first? Well, because like I said, it is these ships are situational. I'm kind of doing the conclusion before the second battle here because I want to I want to end this on a um, on a cheerful note. But uh, these ships are very situational. They are if if you if you're if you're playing a battle where you have the situation that you can use your guns effectively and your torpedoes and you can use your um, you can use your concealment and you can get into positions where you can do something then it's it's an amazing ship but just be aware that if you if the situation is not allowing for this kind of scenario and you you have to do something a little bit more traditional uh, she's not very good at it because of the very slow reload, the questionable, uh, this, uh, the questionable uh, dispersion of these four six millimeter guns, and uh, the the lack of range, there's just not an awful lot you can do with this ship unless you're playing within eight kilometers, and that is kind of the key to uh, to making this happen. And uh, that means that on certain scenarios, it is just very very difficult to um, you know to make something happen. <laughs> While the Richthofen kills the Baltimore there, well done the Richthofen. So this is just something that happens, right? Does this mean this is a bad ship? No, no, it isn't. But it is a situational ship. And uh, this is just something to be aware of. So after this uh, unmitigated disaster, let's, uh, let's get ourselves into a, battle that, um, into a battle that's a bit more fun. I just wanted to show you this because it would have been easy for me to just, you know, play 20 games, pick the two games that worked really well. And then say, "Hey, this is how this is how the ship works." And if you don't get that on every battle, then <laughs> then it's your your problem. It isn't, right? So let's uh, let's get into game number two. And here we are in the second battle. And this is why I picked this one because this is base capture on hourglass. The same scenario we were just playing, but this time we are top tier. We're up against Lexington, Friedrich der Große, North Carolina, Neptune, and Mainz. No destroyers. Uh, I mean, you, technically the Neptune counts, but uh, let's do this and and see how this plays out differently, and uh, why why I'm showing you these two. Anyway, so we're in the exact same position. There's a cruiser next to us. We're on the right flank, and I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did in the last part. I'm going to get to that little island. That's a taco on our side. Good, so he can go scouting. No destroyers on the enemy team. Everything over to armor piercing. Uh, torpedoes on narrow spread. And we're gonna get uh, next to that island there, and then see see what's happening. Obviously, unfortunately, the Takao leaves us alone. So if the carrier decides to come down this way, then uh, I am going to take quite a bit of damage. But Takao decides that he would like to play in the middle, so I'm gonna have to hold this flank on my own seas here, which is okay. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna get in behind the island and uh, wait wait for, for a carrier scout to see what's happening. Okay, there's one cruiser over there. The destroyer is a bot, so we don't have to worry about that one. But I still want to know what's what's going on on this uh, on this side here. I'm not yet spotted. Uh, there's, it's a mines over there. So let's wait for him to give us a nice broadside and then we can start to get the first shot out. That is a bot Iowa, so not super dangerous. And there's the Friedrich der Große. Okay, so I've got Bot Iowa, Fred, Freddy and Mainz against myself here. And unfortunately I am spotted, so the Mainz is starting to open up on me. But, uh, and so is the Bot Iowa obviously, and the Freddy will eventually do the same thing. So I'm not pushing, because there's three of them, and I don't have the armor. But I can go undetected, but on, vir on the virtue of being behind the island, and start opening up at, um, at the Bot. Now I'm spotted again. 
switching the secondaries over to high explosive because you know bots don't damage control and i'm just dropping some torpedoes in the general direction i don't have high hopes that these are going to hit but um, if i drop them now i've got them reloaded when i need them and uh, just making use of the secondary overload they've got uh, uh, we're able to do a little bit of damage to the bot there and uh, i just need to get that thing out of the way because it's not that it, that bots are particularly dangerous, but this is not a ship in which you can, in which you can afford to to uh, to get into crossfires. So that bot should be dead by all intents and purposes. There's the mines again. Uh, unfortunately, at this range, my main guns are completely incapable of doing an awful lot against that thing. We've got four torpedoes in torpedo hits on the bot, and uh, what well, we did have we did have four four hits on on the mines. Mines is now playing against a bot Fletcher. It's trying to torpedo that thing. Uh, the bot Iowa isn't dead, but um, it it looks like uh, it, it's on solo health that I don't think it's it's a mu it's much of a problem for the rest of my team. So now I can push because now uh, the mines is on low health. I think mines is not going to be an, an issue, which means now I just have a Freddy to worry about. So let's get a couple more shots uh, at uh, at that mines out. And just see what that Freddy does. Okay, mines is shooting at me. And so is the Freddy, I believe. Mines is now sailing away. So fair uh, parting shots to the mines. First heal up. And now we're going to go and deal with the Friedrich der Große. So how do you deal with the Friedrich der Große? Why, why can I now deal with the Friedrich der Große? Well, because uh, it's now a one-on-one -on -one fight. I'm, I'm back up to full health, so is he. But uh, in a close-range engagement, and I mean close-range, I have the upper hand. Because I actually have the... Uh, I, I have the... Uh, the damage output. So I I'm leaving the auto secondaries or uh, the, the manual secondaries on um, on high explosive because I do want to try and trigger a fire and get a damage con because I am doing a torpedo run. <laughs> I don't know if he knows if I have torpedoes, but um, uh, the torpedo angles are great. So first set of torpedoes away on the left side and uh, keep keep harking him with the um, uh, with the high explosive and with obviously with the main guns which at this range are also quite effective now the freddy is completely capable of uh, of doing damage to me but even without the torpedoes i've almost got that thing down to a to half health and he hasn't done he hasn't done the same to me in return so now he takes the first set of torpedoes and uh, i am more or less bowing he's, he's now perma flooding and uh, now i can now I can hit him from the other side, and at this range, these four six millimeters are doing are doing the job just just fine. So that's uh, that's an ex Freddy, and uh, that's what I mean, right? If the enemy team allows you to do these kind of moves, then the amount of damage that you can output is absolutely amazing. But it does rely on the situation, and you don't always get these situations anyway. While we're looking for something else to shoot at, uh, the right flank is now is now completely open. We've we've taken care of the Freddy. There is the enemy carrier, spotted by the friendly carrier, and he's on on half hit points already. So uh, we can and he's he's uh, sending his planes against that cruiser next to me, which is great. So uh, we can make short work of that thing as well. And uh, then it's just uh, it's one more battleship and two and the two cruisers. So the mines and the mines is on low hit points. I've been I've been working the mines over for a while. Okay, carrier goes undetected, but I can see where he is. I can see where the planes are starting. So, shots out. Yep, there's the Lexi. And uh, this may be a this may be a battle cruiser, but uh, not for long. <laughs> uh, mines is on so low health, uh, so uh, on such low health that I don't really have to worry about it uh, at this point. And he doesn't have the torpedo range to do an awful lot. Plus, he's got a cruiser coming in, so I can I can uh, comfortably deal with the with the Lexington here. The North Carolina is dead. Mines takes out the Amalfi on our side, but um, I've just sunk the uh, the Lexington, and the auto secondaries have apparently also just taken care of the mines. So now it's just the Neptune left. Hello, Mr. Neptune. <laughs> uh, you squishy, and you decide to uh, to fight me at close range, which is something I am very much in favor of. So uh, he smokes up, which isn't going to help him. <laughs> He's got the Hydra up just in case there is a. Uh, there, and there, there are torpedoes in the water, because uh, that's also why I'm slowing down, because, you know, a Neptune. These secondaries, by the way, are completely capable of citadelling a Neptune at this range. They have no problem with that whatsoever. Um, yeah, that's about where he is. So another blind shot out. And I know where you are. I can see your tracers. And that is an ex-Neptune. So there we go. You see what I mean, right? You, um, you, you can have absolutely amazing games like this. 
if you can if the situation arises that you can that that you are allowed to take one-on-one -on -one fights if that is not the case but you're in a position where you can't disengage because you know then you would just leave a flank open and you would just have uh, shimakaze run around and and torpedo your carrier um this is nothing you can do in this ship and this is a situation that is slightly different in the um, uh, in the more traditional battleship line because in that line you can just tank and you can actually make use of your guns at range and uh, still rack up a reasonable amount of damage whereas in the battle cruisers they are extremely dependent on having being in this kind of situations where they can do something and at tier 9 in, with tier 10 games uh, with the, the lack of armor it makes for a mixed bag of games that you're going to get. I'm not saying the ship isn't fun. I, I am enjoying the ship, and I will probably play this this line myself on, on my personal once it comes out on my personal account. And uh, I am also curious to see what the Schlieffen is going to look like at tier 10. We're going to be looking at that deck next week. But uh, just be aware that they are situational ships, and uh, if the situation doesn't come up and the enemy team decides, the enemy battleship line decides that they need to delete you from long range and you have nowhere to go and nowhere to seek cover, then uh, there's not an awful lot you can do. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.